common blockers to creative thinking, boundaries, ethics, legal ramifications, policy and procedures, probability and risk, and opinions. So the creative thinking process can often be inhibited by a range of factors that bound individuals to specific structures or deter thinkers from creative ideas. Below is an outline of some common blockers to the creative thinking process. So here is my individual, they're trying to think of great ideas, but unfortunately they've got these blockers surrounding them. So firstly, we'll start off with that of boundaries. And I know that sounds like a pretty general one, but these are factors that affect the scope of the project, such as budget, time frame, and resources. Basically, we can't create the most greatest thing of all time ever because we're bound by how much money we have, how much time we need to create it, and what resources are available to me to generate that. Okay, so ultimately, I can think of these great ideas, but these boundaries will unfortunately affect the generation of my ideas and responses because unfortunately, I need to be realistic. The second area is that of ethics. Is an idea inclusive and accessible to all, or does it exclude or exploit? Does the idea reflect the values outlined within a code of conduct, which you might be a part of the organization you work for? All right, so things mightn't necessarily be illegal that you're doing, but it's still considered wrong or against the code of conduct in the place that you're working for. After that, we'll look at legal ramifications. I know I just brought it up there a sec, but these are the elements that do have a legal impact and might in be in breach of specific laws okay and these laws might also relate to things such as copyright and intellectual property so they don't break the law by doing something wrong they're actually using someone else's information without going through the correct channels and those things can be addressed if you do go through those correct channels pay for a license or seek that acknowledgement there too but obviously we've got to keep that in mind because it still is a legal ramification the other area here that needs to be understood is is the idea that we are creating could it be used for illegal practices? So we might have a great idea and it in itself, it's not gonna do anything illegal, but then someone could use the actual software in turn to do something illegal. And then that might be a factor. And then that, that also relates to ethics as well and what we think with right and wrong, okay? Because it mightn't be directly illegal what we're doing, but it could be unethical and lead to illegal behavior. So there's obviously a bit of overlap here. The next area is that of policy and procedures within an organization. So the rules within the organization that unfortunately you have to abide by and adhere to because they govern over you or the person that's contracted you to develop the system for them or the idea for them. This may relate to things such as the use of content, corporate branding, color schemes, and practices for work and development specified within the company's formal documentation. So pretty much at the beginning of the actual project, you need to refer to all this stuff. You need to refer to this documentation to ensure that you're abiding by it. And sometimes it might even factor into the problem statement too, that you've got to do this, this, and this, so that whatever we are developing is in line with the corporate image and branding outlined in their documentation. The next area then is the probability and risk. Okay, now we've mentioned it before in this unit that risk is obviously something we need to address, but when we take risky ideas and choose to be innovative, we can sometimes create something new and interesting that obviously will enter new markets, you know, and that's the excitement when we develop. But obviously there's big chances that we are taking there and we need to weigh up risk. And obviously this term here that you can see on screen, that of the feasibility of risks, okay? Are they worth doing? And so we assess this on many different ideas we might have. Feasibility has four areas related to it. That of economic, okay, the amount of money we have available, technical, the technology we have available in the form of hardware and software, operational, the skills of the people who are intended to use whatever we are developing, and then finally schedule, the time frame, okay, related to how long we have to develop this. So we need to assess those four key areas to assess the feasibility of each of our ideas, and that helps us weigh up what is the safest idea to go ahead with. But the safest idea to go ahead with isn't necessarily going to be the most interesting or innovative idea, and that's where it can become a blocker to our creative thinking process. The final area is that of opinions, okay? When you have a great idea, everyone's gonna have an opinion on it. So the conflicting ideas and opinions of other individuals, in some cases, these opinions are gonna be unconstructive or negative just from people who are of that nature. There's nothing wrong with receiving constructive criticism because sometimes that helps us model into a better idea, but unfortunately some people are just gonna be negative and they're not gonna support the idea anyway. So I hope this has given you an overview of different blockers to creative thinking. Those things that are related to the actual scope of the project, 
the risks associated with the project, such as a time frame, the amount of money available, the skills of the people that'll be using it, the things of the corporation and the documentation that mean we have to align with whoever we're developing for. And then obviously ethical and legal ramifications that relate to kind of right and wrong and whether what we're doing is ethically correct. Although we can do something, uh, should we do it, okay? And are there laws in place that might, it might be in conflict with that could get us into a lot of trouble? So I hope this is giving you a good understanding of these common blockers.